good afternoon to all. It's uh, 1201 on uh, Wednesday, July 3rd, and this is the uh, Athens City Planning Commission meeting, a regular meeting for the and first meeting of July. Um, the first order of business is to establish a, a quorum. And uh, as I look uh, both left and right, we have all commission members here today. So all five of us will be uh, a part of this meeting. The second um, is if there's anyone who um, would like to uh, speak today, I would ask that they raise their right hand and indicate um, and, and uh, say that uh, or agree with me with regard to the fact that um, you will uh, give us the truth, all, all the truth to the best of your knowledge. Everybody else? I, okay. Um, our first uh, order of actual business is the, um, the di disposition of the uh, June 25th meetings. I, uh, I think everybody has that in their packets. I hope people have had a chance to take a look at it. Um, I, I did, and it looked uh, pretty accurate to me. So um, if anybody uh, would like to move that we accept the minutes as presented or make an addition or correction. Um, I move I'll, to adopt. I'll second. Okay. Any, there, was there anything, uh, Chris, did you have something? I see you circled something. No, oh, no, okay. no, this is just for my memory. Okay, okay, perfect, okay. So, um, uh, with a uh, motion and a second, um, I'll uh, ask that those in favor of accepting the minutes say aye. 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 And the same sign for uh, disappro or not approving. Any any didn't people not approving? No. So it's passed. So um, our first case is um, case 2406, our only case actually, and it is the split on Lavelle Road. Um, it's indicated, I assume, zero Lavelle Road because uh, there's no address for the property at this point in time. Um, so what I would like to do here to start with that is I want to read the emails into the record that I have received from folks. Um, then I would ask David and or Megan if they have anything they would like to add with regard to this, um, this case to do that at that point. Um, followed by any of the comments or uh, from the board members, and then we will open it up to additional conversations with uh, those present. Um, I would like to ask that the people present, um, uh, you know, try to focus on other issues. Everything will be read into the record. Uh, everything's in the record now, actually, be and the minutes with regard and the emails were all put into the record. So I'd, I'd like to focus on new information if folks have new information uh, or if there's a new person here who hadn't had an opportunity to speak in the past. So, okay, with that, let me, let me start through these, um, these uh, emails that I have. The first one I've, I've received was from Terry Eiler, um, and he, he wrote to me, and he actually um, uh, signed it, Terry and Linthia, so both from, from the family, I guess. But Terry uh, came through Terry's uh, email address. He said, John, I am writing to express my opposition to the proposed development of land on Lavelle Road for Airbnb and other multi-unit purposes. The site in question borders family land, which includes a tree farm and conservancy area. The area slated for development is accessed by, by Lavelle Road, a narrow winding lane that all already faces challenges of safety, drainage, limited utilities, and overhanging trees. Additionally, this uh, region is served by a small Leax water line with limited taps and water pressure. The construction of, a septic, of septic systems here require meticulous planning due to a limestone, due to the limestone caps and outcroppings that are often less than six feet below the surface, significantly limiting drainage fields. La Lavelle Road is primarily home to a single family dwellings, 
uh, stretching between Highway 56 and Lurick Road. Although intended for local traffic only, it is frequently used as a cut through between State Route, 50, or, or State Route uh, 682 and Highway 56. The increase in traffic and strain on utilities from multiple rental units is not appropriate use, not an appropriate use for this land, which is best served as wooded green space with single family homes. Thank you for considering my objections via email. I regret that I cannot uh, be present to voice my opposition in person. And again, from Terry and Olympia Island. Um, I also received yesterday another email from from the Eilers, and um, I'll read that one in. I have not gotten that one to the board members uh, or or to the the code officer, and we'll get that to them this afternoon. Um, but it it says, John, in addition to my previous letter in opposition to the proposed small subdivision on Lavelle Road, I would like to add the information that the USDA Soil and Water Division in the Plains should be, should be advised in writing of any plans to develop lands along the Margaret Creek and Factory Creek protected watersheds in, uh, to the uh, Hocking River. I suspect that this would require as part of the, uh, be required as part of the Health Department's approval to county, sep to county septic system plans. Thank you for adding this information to my objection, Terry and Olynthia Island. Yeah, you, right, and he added that in. He, uh, okay, yes. Um, the, the next one I have was from Erica Spezio, and it says, Dr. Mr. Katowski, I reside at 8590 Lavelle Road, and I am reaching out to voice my opposition to the proposed use of land on Lavelle Road for Airbnb development. My family relocated here in June of 2023, seeking a quieter life away from living in Las Vegas for 25 years. My initial experiences with Airbnb be in other areas have shown me the negative impact they can have on communities and am not keen on dealing with that in our new neighborhood. Lavelle Road is, uh, is quite, quite narrow and the traffic is already excessive, to say the least. There, e there, there's even a single lane bridge. Constructing Airbnbs and, and or multi-unit buildings here would only exacerbate the congestion and increase the risk of accidents. With a child who will soon be driving, the current road conditions are already concerning and more traffic would po pose a significant safety hazard. We, choose, we chose Lavelle Road for its single family homes and spacious private yards. Had we been aware of the potential for Airbnb or multi-unit buildings, we would have chosen a different location. I urge you to consider the safety and well-being of Lavelle residents over the financial interests of those seeking to profit from this development. I wish I had been informed earlier so I could have attended. I was just recently made aware of this development. I'm sorry I won't be able to physically oppose it, but please understand that the Lavelle community is united in our opposition to this project. Please reach out if you have any questions. Erica and Gabe um, Spezio the second one. The third one is uh, from Angela Anderson. Uh, it says, Dear members of the Athens City Planning Commission, we are writing to support our neighbors in opposition uh, in opposing the division of a section of land on Lavelle Road into three parcels and subsequent development into a subdivision. Our road is narrow, curvy, including several blind spots and has significant drop-offs on the sides of the road, adding additional units, especially those that could include multifamily units and or um, 
visitors unfamiliar with the road is troublesome and dangerous. We know how scary this is as our road has used, was used as an unofficial detour uh, with the closing of the bridge on Union Street slash Route 56 for repair a few years ago. The stress on utilities and other infrastructure with the addition of multi-units would also be impacted with, with dividing what is now one parcel. While we are not aware of the specifics of the ordinance being appealed to, our, to your committee, we want to voice our opposition to, approve, to approval as we all learn more. Thank you for your consideration and sticking with uh, your original decision to deny the request for dividing and developing the parcel at Zero Lavelle Road. We will not be able to attend the meeting in person we, as we will be out of town. Jeffrey and Angela um, Anderson at 8959 Lavelle Road. Okay, the fourth one is from um, Catherine and Thomas Scott. It says, Mr. Katowski, we have uh, been on Lavelle Road for 40 years and have seen it grow from a few houses to most lots now having homes on them. The road is serviced by a small LEAX line that already loses pressure and is not adequate for the amount of homes. Lavelle Road is narrow and dangerous at blind spots. Residents know where to slow down or hug the right side. I have been narrowly missed many times because of people unfamiliar with the road driving in the center of the road on hills and blind spots. In the snow, it is nearly impossible for two cars to pass. We also have concerns about the increase in septic system. We, it seems like Athens is being overrun with apartments, rentals, and Airbnbs. We hope this doesn't happen in our area. Thank you for taking our consideration into con our concerns into consideration and please express them to the Planning Commission at the meeting. Catherine and Thomas Scott. So the last one then is from um, uh, Corlin Campbell Phillips. And it says, John, as a resident of Lavelle Road, I am writing to you this evening uh, to express my concerns regarding subdivision of lands owned by Russell Chamberlain near 8807 Lavelle Road. As a newer resident of a Lavelle, who came previously, who came previously lived in Cincinnati, Columbus, and Yellow Springs, Ohio, I have an, an interesting view on the current utility challenges facing our quaint street. When my wife and I first settled in, we didn't quite realize the interesting state of affairs regarding having LEAX providing water service, but every resident having a private waste disposal septic system. These systems appear to be oftentimes constrained in their placement on the properties they serve, perhaps due to the mineral slash rock composition under the soil, which was made abundantly clear to me after a contractor broke an entire drilling rig attempting to uh, create geothermal piping wells on our property. This obviously creates a unique environmental situation on our street as property drainage naturally feeds Hocking River tributaries such as Margaret Creek. Additionally, additionally Lavelle Road is at its best a 1.75 car roadway that is often used at excessive speeds by people connecting from 56 to 682 and students taking joy rides. The road already feels unsafe at night and early in the morning to traverse via the car and feels unsafe at all hours of the day as a pedestrian just trying to get some fresh air and walk their dogs. Additionally, much of the Lavelle Road, much of Lavelle road did not even have hardwired broadband internet when we moved in due to over-reporting by spectrum on FCC surveys. 
we finally pushed Spectrum to finish build build out on uh, for most slash all of the remaining addresses. However, it is an uphill battle as we still don't have a, f a firm date from Frontier, formerly GTE, to replace their underground buried, decaying, and barely functional copper pots infrastructure. All this is to say Lavelle is a beautiful oasis near the city, but given its proximity, it faces some stark limitations in water delivery, sewer treatment, road safety slash drainage care, modern digital infrastructure, and frequent electrical issues that already tax AAP, AAP crews slash services ability to uh, find downlines in a timely manner. Based on the Athens County Comprehensive Plan, when adding things such as subdivisions, major or minor, some of the recommendations from the planner, the, from the plan writers include adopting asphalt as a minimum standard for subdivision road service. Additionally, the plan writers note, pedestrians and bicyclists often feel unwelcome or even threatened on most streets and roads. This would almost certainly increase traffic on Lavelle and exa exacerbate the uh, sentiment quoted uh, from comprehensive plan. Additionally, while the strategic plan mentions fostering entrepreneurship within Athens County, according to the plan, the entrepreneurial businesses should provide for meaningful and skill-oriented employment for Athens County residents. Airbnb and competing services, e.g. Uh, VRBOs, only serve to perpetuate a gig environment that don't provide inherent employment strategies or high paying job opportunities. I believe this development would alter the current uh, makeup of Lavelle Road significantly by changing the dynamic of its current um, single family housing with large wooded conservation areas and adding in a potential disruptive and culture changing element of a short term rental a subdivision. The utility infrastructure of Lavelle Road is already under resourced and strained. The road and drainage have not been modernized to meet the current level of demand, let alone more meaningful, let alone add, let alone, let me more. Additionally, th there's not likely to be an economic entrepreneurial impact the community can realize or profit from in any meaningful way. That is, what is possible is a disruptive building project, future strained resources, negative em environmental impact, and utility road construction, etc., and increased traffic and litter. I sincerely thank you for consideration and time reading this email. So that was the fifth one. Now, um, we did get a, another one that was, uh, I think, sent to Dave, David Riggs from Terry. But as I looked at it, 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 it went to some of the to county commissioners and the health department. A few, so, and he was in that. He forwarded it to us. I'm not going to read that one because it was essentially a combination of the two you sent to me. Okay, good. So with that, um, I would uh, I, I, I uh, thank people for tolerating my reading and uh, the length of what it took to get it in. But uh, with that, I'll, I'll uh, does David or, or Megan, do you have anything you would like to add to this particular case at this point in time? I don't think so. I think uh, I would reiterate that this is a, a request for a um, major subdivision based on the city code that says that access easement, uh, any creation of an access easement automatically kicks it in as a major subdivision, and that's why you're seeing this today. <clears throat> Megan, do you have anything to add? Um, all I would clarify, there was a comment made that the denial of this application was already made by staff, which is why it's before the Planning Commission today, and that denial was they filed for the wrong application type. So I just wanted to clarify that um, the denial was redirecting them to the major subdivision application, not the minor. So, 
Thank you. Do any of the, uh, the commission members have anything they'd like to add at this point? Another question. Are there any restrictions on this now? Could they build whatever they want on this property? Uh, yeah, what we're looking at is only the lot split. Um, yeah. The usage is, is really, it's cause, because it's in the county, that usage is really uh, not up to us to look at. So it's just the lot split. And yes, they could do it. They could build a hotel if they wanted yeah. to. They could, they could actually split it into multiple lots if they wanted to without having to come before this board. Okay, thank you. Yes. So just so I understand, so it came forward as a lot split, and you're saying because it, it doesn't have the easement, or it would need the easement in there, that it was denied, but it's been redirected so that it could apply then for the major subdivision, which would have different requirements. A lot different requirements, yeah. Yeah. So the request would be to allow a variance for uh, treating this as a, as a minor subdivision, even though it requires a major subdivision. Uh, by our code, it requires a major subdivision. Um, uh, all, those, all those requirements be adopted. So the appeal is it may, asking us to make exception. Make an exception, yeah. And, and city council would then, ha based on our recommendation, would act upon it. This is the way we've done it before, where we've had a minor subdivision. It's, typically, it's basically a minor subdivision, but it has an access easement. We've asked that it be treated as a, uh, the, the appellant has asked that it be treated as a minor subdivision. It goes before this board, and that recommendation then goes to city council. Yes. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chair. I, I do have a, a, a point to read, and I kind of wrote some stuff up on this particular case because I think it's instructive in the wider discussion about, about uh, land use planning and such. And so um, if you don't mind, I'd go ahead and read it. Um, first of all, it's important to reiterate the role of the Athens City Planning Commission in this case as well as what is not its role. The commission does not decide anything related to land use in the unincorporated areas of the county. Outside of Athens and Nelsonville and the other parts of Athens County, both citizenry and elected leadership have vigorously opposed any kind of zoning restrictions for the 60 or so years since zoning started in Athens in the 1960s. The unincorporated areas simply do not want the government telling us what we can and can't do with our property, and particularly those busy busybodies in the city of Athens. Though ironically, we often are ready to demand the government tell our neighbor what not to do with their property. The Ohio Revised Code gives cities some very limited authority in the area just outside the boundaries regarding land subdivisions only. The purpose of this authority is to see that any property splits will be compatible with city services should the area ever annex in the future. That's all. It is not to decide if a land use is compatible with the surrounding land or not, or if the current infrastructure can support it or not, or if the proposed use is a good idea or not. The applicant in this situation has provided two different lot split versions, only one of which require planning commission approval. The one with the easements to access the multiple, parcel, multiple parcels. The other version with the flag lots, and I think it's in our packet, is not a subdivision that requires commission approval. The land will be subdivided in some manner and the landowner will proceed with whatever plans he comes up with. We have to decide which version of the lot split would be the less objectionable to the city if and when the area ever annexes, and it may never. This case is instructive about the benefits and perils of growth at the boundaries of cities in unincorporated areas. In our fractured county system, concerns about the roads should be placed with the Athens Township, concerns about the water line should be placed with LEAX, and concerns about sewage and septic should be placed with the health department. If the citizens of an area wish the city of Athens government coordinate all of these things as well as regulate the land use with zoning, seeking annexation into the city of Athens is the only way to do that. Annexation is a deliberate, difficult effort intentionally made so in state law uh, so that it is not done haphazardly that requires consensus of a majority of those wishing to annex. So these choices are things we have to think about as we plan for both Athens and the wider region in the years ahead. So I, I think that's important to note, you know, really what our role is in this particular situation. And all of these concerns are absolutely appropriate that we've heard from the, uh, to be concerned about. You know, certainly the road is narrow. Certainly the, uh, the water service is, 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 um, is, is subpar. 
Um, there's septic challenges in that particular area. Um, you know, and all of these things are things that the applicant should take into consideration as they're getting ready to, to build. This commission, it's outside the scope of this commission's authority and duty um, to address those particular concerns. And ultimately, we're just looking at the land split and deciding whether or not this version, or if we, if we choose to deny it, this version is better should this area annex in the future. Thank you. Uh, Mayor? Um, given what Director Stone has just mentioned, you know, in, and in within our deciding process, you know, to look at the one image that you just showed that shows several separate accesses onto Lorig Road to the point of those who are speaking on the potential impacts on Lorig Road. I could only imagine it, it's a it's a five-fold increase in terms of access points along there, which would be well it would be what it what it is. Um, again, it's it's not part of our role. we our role is to just identify or to decide on the lot split unto itself versus the other version, which is one point of access um, with a shared drive. So. so if it's one point of access with one shared drive, that says major subdivision. Uh, we're, we're voting on it. That's a part of the minor subdivision. Minor that, subdivision. That they're seeking a minor subdivision, I think. Yeah, so what okay. we'd like, uh, what, we, what we were suggesting that you uh, would have would approve it or deny it based on treating this as a minor sub subdivision and that that recommendation would go to city council when you say you you want to treat it as a minor subdivision then you don't have to do all the infrastructure required for a major subdivision put a public road in pave that public road mm -hmm. uh, we don't we don't allow uh, access to multiple lots in the city um, without having some kind of a road improvement um, plan that's approved by this board and then by city council. I, that's a point of clarification, though, I think, and make sure that I ask this correctly, and perhaps it's for the applicant. If we deny this and the applicant proceeds with a minor subdivision, which is the flag lot version, that doesn't mean that there will be five access points. He will still access um, via one driveway. It's just the lots will front on the road, so they have frontage. Even if a driveway is never built there, they have frontage, and it's not an illegal subdivision at that yep, point. Correct? That's correct. Yeah. And how he decides to access his property is really up to him, ultimately, whether or not he builds five driveways or whether he keeps it as one driveway. But but the lots themselves aren't illegal because they all have frontage on yep. on the bill road. Yeah. Yeah. They public access is required for public road frontage is required for any lot split. So this one wouldn't have it. It would have access through a private uh, access easement, and that's the difference between the two. Everybody comfortable? Everybody. Um, so I would like uh, then now to um, open it up a little bit. I, I'd first go to uh, Mr. Chamberlain. Do you have anything you'd like to say uh, based on the discussions that have taken place at this point? Could, could you go to the podium and we're trying to record this. I just wanted to make sure that you had the um, digital version that wasn't hand drawn and that got entered into the record. I think everybody's looking at that. Okay, yeah. that's great. That was all. Yeah, I think um, uh, Mr. Stone's summary was, was uh, anything that I would have to say. I don't think I could add to that. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so are there any, is there anybody who would like to speak? Yes, Dylan. Name and address, please. Yes, sir. My name is Dylan Armstrong. I live at 8807 Lavelle Road. I'm here representing the Armstrong family. My father wanted to attend but was unable to today. Um, my first point being a quick reminder that we are fighting the sale of this piece of property in court. We are looking to have this sale reversed, and I do have support from family in doing that. Um, 
Secondly, I wanted to speak about the property itself um, as someone who has lived on it for my entire life. We used to, as a family, walk this property every day. We maintain the trails. And I have to tell you that despite the fact that I can point out individual trees and tell you which family members planted them, that's not what I remember about walking this property every day. What I remember is the biodiversity. I remember the foxes, the bears, the animals that we encountered every single day and that freely made their way into our yard on a regular basis and sometimes into our trash. Um, my point being, the last time that, that this commission met, we heard from an Ohio University representative about plans that they were doing and the green space that they were making on campus. And I want to reiterate and bring to attention to this council that the green space that we want to preserve on Lavelle Road is fundamentally different and has a more profound impact on the environmental and mental health of the area. What we are looking to preserve is biodiversity. And having recently completed a course in biological conservation, my takeaway from that course was that larger tracts of land are far more effective at the preservation of biodiversity than multiple medium-sized plots would be, regardless of the total acreage involved. We are focused on what development of this land and subdivision of this land would mean to the biodiversity of the area, not just on this land, but also to adjoining plots. The development of this land, the subdivision of this land, would not only be detrimental to the biodiversity on this plot, but could also, or would also most likely be detrimental to the biodiversity on the adjoining plots as well. Um, development around plots that are held as conservations tend to negatively affect the biodiversity on those conservations and their effectiveness as conservation spaces. Um, I myself am in the school of business. I value business, I value progress, I value development of Athens. We are this beautiful, unpolished gem of Appalachia with so much potential. But part of our identity as a community is that we have a natural space that we coexist with that is a part of who we are. And I am asking that this council work to preserve that space to the extent to which you are capable. I appreciate business, I appreciate development, but business and development should be done for the benefit of a community, not to its detriment. And it has been made clear by the vast majority of the residents on Lavelle that we feel that any subdivision, any development would be to the detriment of our community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? So is there any further discussion about this here with any of the board members? So I guess we're um, ready to entertain a motion if somebody wants to make a motion. And this is to approve the lot split. Let's make sure we get the, the motion correct, right? Correct, yes. So. Yes, I mean, whatever motion, but that, that's right. what I was assuming sure. we would be. Yes, so I'm sorry. The, the appellant has asked for us to approve a lot split as a major subdivision, or as a, as a variance to the major subdivision and, and allow it under the minor subdivision provisions, correct? Correct. Okay, so I, I make that motion. With, with one, one designated one access, access point, and yes. several of the parcels, I don't know, was it three of the parcels? Two of the parcels without uh, without uh, frontage. road frontage. Without frontage, yes. yes. So, as, uh, Mr. Stone has made that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. Second. Any other discussion now before we before I entertain a vote? Um, okay. Sorry. Okay, so all those in favor of um, the proposed motion, which would uh, allow this to be considered a minor subdivision with one access and the parcels not requiring 
frontage on the road so that what we would end up with is three total parcels or four three total parcels that's what i thought on this one okay all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 aye, aye. aye. those those opposed. opposed aye okay one opposed so it passed four to one thank you um Communications are the next item on the agenda, and uh, is there um, any communications other than the reports that David and, and Megan might have? Is there any other communications here from, uh, with regard to the board? Okay, then I'll look to uh, Mr. Riggs. Uh, Mr. Riggs, do you have a, a report today? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd just like to uh, update everybody, if I could, on some of the construction that's going on. So uh, what we're going to see is the Belmont Green Apartments. These are the senior housing apartments on, uh, I think it's uh, Cook Road or, uh, not Cook, but Della Road. Yeah, Della Drive. Um, they're going to be doing some uh, remodeling of those uh, apartments. They're going to probably start this year. The uh, Lowstro building, 63 South Court, is going to uh, start uh, their remodel of the second and third floors, as well as some of the shell. Um, that should be, uh, that's uh, permit has been approved. They should be happening uh, fairly soon. As you probably know, the Chipotle and Starbucks are under construction. Um, Starbucks has not yet uh, uh, got their plans completed, but Chipotle has, and they're, uh, they're Going gangbusters, uh, as you can as you can see there. So, just give you a little update on some of the construction activities that are going on. Thank you, Ms. Jennings. Anything? Um, the only update I would add is tagging on to the Lostro building. Um, we had a meeting with them. The applicant, the property owner, is interested in a PACE district, which, um, working with the state, it, it kind of works like a TIF district. It's just focused on. Um, energy efficiency improvements to that building and so they do have to partner with the city but um, we had a meeting with them and Lisa Eliason and we're starting that conversation Wh ahead, which Mary. building is this again the Lostro, Lostro building at 63 South Court oh. Oh. Fall at okay. Mm -hmm. okay okay and, th and that's the one you were talking about work on the second and, and, and the uh, uh, second and third floor in the skin yep mm -hmm. okay that's what I thought. okay go ahead mayor mayor just a question about PACE stands for. Oh, you caught me off guard. I apologize. I don't oh, know. That's what okay. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll look it up. I'm okay. just curious. Well, Sorry. That, okay. So this might be helpful. So is there a request for PACE financing? Is that basically what we're talking about? So the, the financing would all be private. The only thing that the city would be involved in is creating an actual district. Um, and that would all be worked through council. Um, it's, it's similar to that TIF district. So it's not like a zoning related district there. It is, it's interesting. I'm familiar with PACE financing. Okay. Um, I'm not in, uh, at all familiar with a PACE district. Okay. That's a new one for me. <laughs> I'd like to learn more um, as we move forward, especially since we're going to have to approve it or not. <laughs> forward. So uh, anything else, Megan? No. No. Okay. So um, now is an, uh, on the agenda is an opportunity for... Uh, Citizen to speak to speak about items not covered by the agenda. Are there is there anyone who would like to speak on anything other than what we've talked about today? No. Okay. So with that, um, we're down to announcements and other businesses business, and I would like to. Okay. Uh, I have an announcement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. I do have one announcement, and um, you know it's kind of dovetailing on. Um, Ms. Jennings' report. This is a different initiative the city has undertaken, um, and ultimately with her as the spearhead. But but I don't want to get out ahead of our skis because we're not sure if we're going to get funded yet. But there's a new program called Welcome Home Ohio, which is a um, uh, a state initiative to provide grants to promote um, housing development and home ownership uh, in in communities. And uh, I, I won't get too far into the weeds about how we're going to approach this, but we're we're we're, um, we're uh, um, cautiously optimistic that we'll get funded uh, and then be able to put a good program in really to focus on urban infill uh, housing as a mechanism to increase the housing supply I'd encourage folks to take a look at that program there's a good website that describes how it is and then then I'll keep the Commission uh, up to speed on uh, on if we're successful thank you 
Any other announcements? So the only announcement I have is I wanted to wish everybody a wonderful and safe 4th of July. With that, our next meeting is um, July 17th um, here. It's a Wednesday at noon. Um, entertain a motion for adjournment. So move. Second? Second. Second. Okay. We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>